Welcome to Joe's Astrology. This is the birth chart for Taylor Swift. And this is one of those charts where I have, or just in general, I think we have preconceived notions about a person. And then I look at the chart and I'm like, wow, she actually has a lot of traits that I like. <laughs> and uh, completely surprised by that. Because I really, you really don't know these people, for the you know for the most part, even though they are public figures. Uh, so we have here, and I'll get into what I mean by that here. She's a Scorpio rising, Sun in Sagittarius, and a Moon in Cancer. And the Scorpio rising is ruled by Pluto, and it's in the twelfth. And you could also say it's ruled by Mars, which is right there on the on the rising sign in Scorpio, where uh, where Mars likes to be. And the Moon in Cancer conjunct Jupiter, where both those planets like to be as well. And then the Sun is in Sagittarius in the Leo decan, where it likes to be. So already a lot of planets in places they they uh, they rule and they're exalted. She has this Venus moving towards a conjunction with the North Node, which I think is what we're seeing now really come into fruition with her becoming very 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 popular. The Venus is there in the second house. She's got. Uranus, Mercury, Neptune, Saturn, and Venus all in the second house. I just did a video on Taurus, and I'll continue to do more videos on Taurus as the sun moves into Taurus. I'll link some of them down in the description. So definitely a money person, uh, a, a person who's known for beauty. But I want to get into this, starting with this 12th house Pluto, and why I like this chart so much. So where she's coming from here, we have the 12th house Pluto and the south node in Leo. So she's coming from a place of uh, what we could call Sagittarius or Pisces and Leo and Scorpio. So definitely the Leo coming from a place of creativity, uh, performance, a, you know, someone who's a performer. It's in the ninth house, which is a house that's associated with Jupiter, uh, which is expansive, good fortune, thing, things like that that people li usually like, travel. So we see the association of where she's coming from, being a traveler uh, and a performer. And even here with Pluto in the 12th, uh, being someone who's musically inclined, uh, and also we can consider that a placement for performance. And then if we move into the opposition here, we see her part of fortune is in Taurus in the sixth house of work. So part of fortune being money, we could associate that with work. We could associate with it with um, self-improvement, making adjustments in life, uh, beauty, and with, with Taurus there, using beauty in order to to get ahead, uh, just um, interested in, in making money in general through that work. And then we move to the opposition of the south node, and it's in Aquarius in the third. So, you know, being a singer, we could see here someone who speaks out, someone who's not. Uh, is not afraid to use their voice. And the ruler is Uranus in the second conjunct Mercury. So we can see there's a genius about her, uh, you know, with that planet of the voice, Mercury, with, with Uranus there, it's progressive. She's She may be talking about progressive topics, especially with that north node in Aquarius. Uh, she's not maybe not afraid to... Uh, use her voice to talk about things that uh, other people, taboo topics, other people might not talk about. 
and you can see here in the second that's part of could be part of what's helping her here in Capricorn uh, achieve her ambitions and climb the, the that ladder in the music industry and make a lot of money. And that's why I like this chart because it's clean from that standpoint. Always when you see that, um, from what I can see, you know, there's not as much drama in the life. There's not as much confusion. These people know what they want. They know what they're going to do and they do it in a routine manner, sixth house here, opposite Pluto. Now from a negative standpoint, it could be somewhat of a crutch where they, um, it's not so much that it's achieving the goals, but it's more of a way to maintain health for these people. So it becomes like they're workaholics. And some people could see that as it from a negative standpoint, uh, which I think you see a lot of people who have these tourist placements and these uh, 12 house, 6 house placements that um, they are, because you could even say here with the ninth house and the third, these heavy placements on, me, on um, the houses of mentalism, they transfer into this area here in the first and the second where it's like I'm going to work, 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 achieve my goals and that keeps me healthy because I can ignore, pretty much ignore my thoughts. And I'm not saying that she's done that, but considering her music, she could be using her music as a way to filter those thoughts. And I don't know her music very well, so I'm just kind of throwing this out there. And it's also a possibility of why so many people like her music with this Jupiter Jupiter moon in Cancer in the 8th where she does get into like more deeper psychological topics and people relate to her emotionally Cancer and that is another reason why her music is so popular but more in this idea of ambition uh, with this Mars in the 1st and the Sun in the 1st very good very strong and uh, ambitious uh, intrepid energy that really backs that second house Taurus energy uh, helping her achieve her goals and do the things that she needs to do like travel and and do all those concerts uh, and like we see in some of my I linked this down there I did a video on billionaires and how these people that do usually do really well in business they have these strong Mars placements, and that's definitely a strong point place for Mars with it being in the first house, an angular house. So not only does she have this uh, very beautiful or beauty, beauty-like persona and emotional persona with this uh, moon, Jupiter, and Cancer in the eighth, but she backs it with this strong very strong Mars being in the first house in Scorpio. Uh, very motivated to achieve her goals. And I also wanted to look at here uh, what is going on with her in the transits currently, which I haven't looked at yet. And here I'm seeing now Pluto is on her Venus. And Pluto is on her Venus. It just went over her Venus. It's going to retrograde over her Venus. And we're seeing her wealth, Pluto wealth, Venus money in Aquarius. We're seeing it with the internet, I'm sure. She's just blowing up on the internet. And we, I don't really know the numbers. Uh, but uh, this is something you can see with the Pluto Venus transit. And I just re recently did a reading. And um, he's the, the reading I did he's having an upcoming Pluto Venus transit and um, you know, he's going through some hard times or it seemed like like semi hard times with work and I told him to look look you know positively could look forward to that Pluto Venus transit I have a Pluto Venus transit coming up in the next 10 years which I'm looking forward to uh, and um, seeing it as positive as I can of course you can see it at the you could there could be negative manifestations of that, but trying to stay positive and this is something also to to 
be reminded of with transits if you can stay positive and um, work in a positive direction in your life uh, these transits can be transformational in a positive manner as opposed to a negative manner so I'm looking forward to that uh, also for some of you out there it could bring inheritance with a Pluto Venus transit as well so we see the simultaneous uh, you know some people would consider death as being negative but then the simultaneous positive of somebody's the fruits of their labor and their life being transferred to you and that can be a positive shift in a person's life you see here Neptune planet of music it's conjunct Mercury as well it's really it's really she has that stellium between Neptune Mercury and uh, Uranus really showing that her voice her music is making money she's making money off her music and Saturn is there as well so uh, clearly a career person a career person that's using um, her voice making music to make to earn a living And you can see the tenth house here. It's ruled. It's in Virgo. It's ruled by Mercury coming back to the second house, which which she's known for. She's known for everything I just mentioned. And definitely known. You can't ignore the the big money uh, with the heavy second house. No, and it's not just money. I'm also going to talk about this today in my next video and beauty and beauty in Taurus and how that correlates to making money see there's a square between Pluto and the North Node it's moving away from that ninth house Sun uh, so very much a need to uh, really expand that self, that sense of self here with Leo, with that, that square. And she's going to do it in a big way. And you see that with the Jupiter moon as well. Uh, and the Jupiter moon in the eighth house of other people's money. If, if anyone you know would have any critique of her you know, blowing up like this or doing things in a big manner, this is why you're seeing it in the chart. There is a strong need to really resolve this ninth house and um, expand her sense of self and her you know, really promote the self. You see that here in the first as well with that Mars and the Sun in the first. Uh, very strong emphasis on promotion of self. Okay, I'm gonna, there's more I could say about this as usual. I'm going to leave it there for now. And hope you enjoyed this video of Taylor Swift's Astrology.